the NFL officiating, I feel like in general, is having such a weird impact this year. So, before we get into the Zach Taylor situation, last night we saw arguably, okay, a couple hip drop tackles. It was one on Zay Flowers. Again, I say arguably because guess what? I don't know 100% if I would consider some of it a hip drop tackle or not, but some people think it is, some people think it isn't. Roquan Smith at the end of the game when uh, Chris Godwin hip drop tackle. Nonetheless, again, I say arguably on both of them because I really can't say I'm qualified to say either one is a hip drop tackle because guess what? I don't think anybody knows what a hip drop tackle is anymore. And I think that's the most factual statement we can say because the NFL doesn't know what it is. Going into this season, the NFL made this huge upset, this huge thing about hip drop tackles. No more. Logan Wilson caused injuries to happen, blamed the whole thing on Logan Wilson, and said no more hip drop tackles. Okay, gotcha. No more hip drop tackles. Now there's hip drop tackles throughout the whole entire season, and the NFL is not calling anything. I mean, we had Jamar Chase almost go down with injury because of a hip drop tackle. Not caught. Again, I feel like nobody knows what a hip drop tackle is. Nobody understands what a hip drop tackle is because the NFL doesn't understand what a hip drop tackle is. It's the weirdest thing, but I guess we're just going to forever be in this limbo of trying to figure something out with a hip drop tackle. Anyway, that situation kind of just spells into this one because, again, hip drop tackles, NFL officiating is absolutely dull crap. So, if you guys remember, there was a flag that was thrown in our last game versus the Cleveland Brownies. And it was a P.I. call that was not called against uh, the Browns defender on Jamar Chase. Now, they threw a flag, and then they picked it up. Which, I always find fun, is when they throw a flag, and um, you look back, and it's a blatant penalty. But then they pick it up, and it's after they, you know, get together, talk, and whatever. And... Then they pick it up, and you're like, okay, well, I feel like low-key. They all met together and said, yeah, no, the NFL is going to kill us if we call this. So let's uh, let's just not call this because this is going to change. This is going to help out one team to make this not a game anymore, and that's going to ruin the views of the actual game on the broadcast. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Again, this is my personal opinion, but they get together. They pick up the penalty. Okay, it's a blatant PI, not called. Okay. Zach Taylor claims he is still waiting from the NFL for a response to this. Because usually what happens is, you know, that happens on the field. Then the NFL goes, oh, crap. We we now have to apologize to the team because we cheated them. That's right. Same thing happened week one in that Mike Kosicki touchdown. The NFL came out and apologized to us and said, Hey, we're sorry, but that was a touchdown. Um, it should not have been caught an incomplete pass. It was a touchdown, and the referees messed up. So that's like, you know, the typical, okay? The NFL admits to their mistakes, whatever. Does it really help us? No. Does it matter in the end? Absolutely no. I mean, yeah, they apologized to us. Thank you for apologizing. Are we going to get anything out of it? No. You just get a, I'm sorry we messed up. We don't know how to do our jobs. That's it. Nonetheless. Um, the NFL will apologize, but they're not apologizing for this, apparently. And Zach Taylor claims he's still waiting. He is still waiting for this situation to be resolved. Of saying that it was a catchable football. And that's, again, they picked up the penalty because they claimed it wasn't catchable. Which, if you watch it back, I mean, the reason why it's technically not catchable is because he holds him and stops him from getting to the ball. Which, if he doesn't touch him, it is catchable. But him touching him and interfering with the uh, pass play is what causes it to be actually uncatchable. Nonetheless, again, he's still waiting to hear from the league. Um, it was still a turns of events. Hans Taylor telling reporters he's still waiting for the league, implying it is one of the few light, few plays the Bengals sent to the league office for further explanation. 
that's not an uncommon process for all NFL teams. This uh, occurrence was pretty out there. So, yeah. Don't think the NFL is going to respond to that. I'll be honest with you. They don't like when they get called out, especially on PI calls. That's what I've learned with the NFL. They don't like it when you call them out and say, like, oh, this was past interference, and you said it wasn't. Because I feel like past interference is the one penalty, out of all the penalties, that's the one penalty I feel like the NFL gets cru uh, crucified for the most and gets, you know, hit with the most. Because, again, you know, rightfully so, but it, it's a penalty that can completely change a ball game. I could be at the 50-yard line, right, and you throw a touchdown, and it's an incomplete pass. They call it pass interference. The ball gets spotted at the one-yard line, okay, because of that P.I. Because of that P.I. resulted in the end zone, the ball gets spotted at the one-yard line. That's a 49-yard penalty. There is no other penalty in the game that is that many yards. You know... They've changed some penalties to be less yards than they were before. So instead of it being like a 5-yard penalty, maybe it's a 10-yard now. Or maybe instead of it being a 15, now it's a 10. They have changed that stuff, right? They have changed that stuff to make it a little bit more, a little bit less, a little bit more, right? But at the end of the day, there is no penalty, again, outside of that one penalty... P.I. that could completely change a game, a drive, everything. I mean, if you have a good enough quarterback, let's say hypothetically speaking, and you could throw it from the, your 40 to their end zone, you could literally get a free, if you get a pass interference call, you're again, you're at the one yard line. So this is the one penalty I feel like the NFL really hates it when people come out and or teams come out and say, hey, that's not pass interference. Can you explain why it is? And usually their response is, oh, please, God, leave us alone. Like, we don't want to explain anything. We don't want to get involved. Because, again, 90% of the time, it seems, it's not P.I. Or it is P.I., and they just don't call it. So it's like it's a 50-50 shot here of them just, again, getting it blatantly wrong. So... I don't think we're going to get a response, to be honest. Other stuff we'll get a response from. You know, hey, was that a touchdown? That wasn't a touchdown. Or that should have been a touchdown. But when it comes to the whole situation here, we're not going to get a response. We won't. I guarantee you. And, you know, we could sit there to the cows come home here. But the NFL is just going to be like, hey, listen, we're not going to admit we messed up because it's past interference. And again, I think a lot of the reasons why is because if they admit they mess up on PI, that's Pandora's box opening up. Okay? That's Pandora's box. Once they admit that with the Bengals, yeah, I believe, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think they ever admitted that they got PI wrong for against us. Like, in our favor. Like, you know, like, oh, we should have called pass interference. Bengals were sorry. That wasn't, or that wasn't P.I., and we did call P.I. Even the Chiefs game, they didn't say anything. So, I don't think they're ever, ever, ever going to admit P.I. for us. Because that's Pandora's box. And, yeah, they don't want to get into that. But tell me down below your thoughts and opinions, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.